This is the story of four men who refuse to forget the child within. <laughs> Their testimony to the fact that a childhood squandered on comics and cartoons isn't necessarily a waste of time, and growing old doesn't mean you have to grow up. Grown-ups are smelly and old and they just do old things. <laughs> we don't like grown-ups. I think a lot of people just, they get to a certain age and they forget what it's like to be a kid. <laughs> I've never thrown out anything. I've still got all my toys from when I was five. It's gonna snow tonight. There's two types of parties you go to when you turn 30. One's are fun ones that you used to go to where everyone's still being a kid and having a good time. And then there's ones where there's sun-dried tomatoes on the table and everyone's wearing suits and talking about real estate. <laughs> and um, I'm staying away from the sun-dried tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> they are the DIY guys of animation. Smooth. Uh, they do their own drawings and create their own stories. Man, I'm good. I think this will work. Oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> they even put voices to their comic creations. Sparkle Friends! Sparkle Friends High School! <laughs> we need to get better jobs. <laughs> Sparkle Friends might not mean anything to you. It's kind of lonely being a worm sometimes. Hey, another worm. You want to hang out with me? Oh, that sounds great! But ask any self-respecting Kiwi kid and they'll tell you it's a weekly cartoon on what now. <laughs> I think collectively we really want to make funny stuff that makes us laugh. You're going to Charliefield Jail! Where's that? In his bum. If other people get it and laugh at it, that's cool. And if they don't, it doesn't matter because, <laughs> yeah, we find it cool. Their cartoons have captured the hearts of Kiwi kids. King Capisi and Pluto have also come a calling, contracting them to make music videos. Now they've caught the eye of some of the biggest players in cartoon animation. Did you hear that, Squidward? And they have a very similar. Um, I think point of view and sense of humor and um, perspective on the world, which just organically matches with Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon's Nina Hart is a big fan. I think that the way that they think um, and the way that they have a very strong heart, fart, smart sensibility um, was something that is quite different from others around, around the world. <laughs> Creating imaginary worlds is something they take in their stride. But there's nothing imaginary about Nickelodeon's offer. Get it right, and just like the creators of SpongeBob, they could stand to make millions and millions and millions of dollars. It would be great to have something that, that goes to the world. The problem with having like a, a huge goal like world domination <laughs> is that if you focus too much on that, you miss the journey. The journey began 30 years ago. Alex, a very cute kid according to his mum, used to while away the days animating his Play-Doh. I knew I wanted to draw like I always loved drawing and colouring books and stuff like that. OK, that's enough of that bullshit! It's just a passion. Across town, little Ryan was perfecting the art of giving imaginary characters a voice of their own. Started with my nana and her Scottish brew. And uh, my granddad's from Yorkshire, so it was always um, go down to farm and milk cows. Halfway around the world, an English kid with a quivering bottom lip was coming to grips with moving to New Zealand. When I was like seven, I had every Thundercat, every He-Man, and my parents sold them all and said, oh, we'll buy you new ones when we get to New Zealand. That's cruel. And it never happened. It doesn't sound like you forgave them. I never did. I really never did. <laughs> That's actually true. <laughs> and finally, there's Jeremy, a straight-A student with issues of his own. I have a good memory, so, you know, most of school is just regurgitation. So I was like a 99% kind of guy, which 
doesn't make you overly popular. Nerd. <laughs> Pretty much. Ow. Together, they are muck putty. We're having a good time. <laughs> Four different guys from four very different backgrounds. Ooh, that feels nice. Alright, let's our both hit. Who share a passion for things childish. It's kind of funny, there's almost two sides to Muck Putty. There's Team Tattoo, and then there's yourself and Ryan, who are almost sun-dried tomato-ish. Oh, <laughs> come on! <laughs> I wear my sun-dried tomatoes on the inside. <laughs> yeah. I think collectively we just want to make our own stuff and do it well. Last year they set themselves a seemingly impossible challenge. They entered the Auckland 48-hour <gasps> film festival and produced a cartoon entry. I think the 48-hour film, I think, is the thing I'm most proud of, just, just because it was purely us. We're about camp fear, because there's cake fear. And that's how we came up with the title. Scared of being branded cheats, they filmed the whole production. It was you! You, the Chinaman! And completed their entry with four ah, hours to spare. It is. Very good. Take that out of my hand. Well done. We have that on camera. Shut up! Oh. Watching the film <laughs> on the big screen, it's nerve-wracking. I mean, you, you're sitting there hoping they laugh at the right bits and stuff, and then, yeah, when our, our name got called at the end, it was just like, it was surreal, and we didn't, we didn't know what to say, really, when we got up there. It was, you know, I mean, shit, we just make cartoons.